That isn't just any old Ford Mustang Shelby GT500, that's Edmunds Shelby GT500. We bought one. And in this video, we're gonna show you what it's like to take ownership of a new GT500. That means removing all the stickers, we're gonna show you what we got, including the options that we chose, the ones we didn't get. And we're also gonna take a look at some of the quirks and features, but if that's trademark, we'll just call it oddities and attributes. Come watch. Click the card to see full coverage of our ownership experience for this and other long-term cars at Edmunds. So this thing's so new, it still has two digits showing on the odometer and floor mats. Pressure's on, because not only do I have a very sharp razor blade in my hand, I have to remove this with doing as little damage as possible. This takes me back to the uh, working at the dealership way back when, oh yeah. Residue. We're gonna have to clean off some of this goop. I'm not, I'm not pro at this. I drive the cars, I don't wanna prep them for delivery. Mm. That's so satisfying. It's been unboxed. Now we can take a deeper look at the window sticker or Monroni, whichever one you want to call it. What do you get when you get a GT500? Well, your base price is $70,300. That's quite a bit of money, but of course you get that big V8 with all that power. You get an oil cooler, you get a Torsen differential, you get 373 rear end. All that fun stuff is actually listed out here in the standard equipment, which is pretty cool. Now, what did we option? Let's start and talk about the color. When you get a Shelby, you've got a couple different options. You could do blue with white stripes. You could go bright green with black stripes. The former seemed a little too obvious and the latter seemed a bit too garish. So we went subtle and got orange. And that cost us $500, $495, but you know, we'll round up. We also got the Recaro bucket seats, which were $1,595. We got the technology package, which is $3,000, and that gives you nice creature comforts like navigation and nicer display, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that stuff that you need when you're 760 horsepower muscle car. We've got the black painted roof, which kind of complements the rest of the black accessories and stuff on the outside, and that's $500. I'm sorry, $700. And then we have the handling package, which we'll get back to, because the gas guzzler tax on this thing is $2,600, because the fuel economy, the combined MPG is 14, and in the real world, it's definitely less. We, we found that out the hard way with the one we tested earlier. The destination is $1,000, $1,100 when you round up, and that brings the out-the-door price to $80,180. $5. Now, the handling package comes in the trunk. You may be wondering why we didn't get the carbon fiber track package. Well, it's $18,500. And even though, yes, it's not my personal money, it's still somebody else's. Uh, so with that in mind, we uh, got the $1,500 handling pack, which comes in these boxes. We're going to open them up and show you what it looks like. <laughs> So in these boxes, we have essentially aerodynamic components. Oil separator, which we'll have to install if and when we start doing track stuff. And these are the splitter extensions that you hang off the front bumper. Mounting hardware, it looks like instructions to, are here. Before we do that though, we're gonna have to go open the owner's manual, do what the internet says, RTFM. So we know how to put them on the right way. Let's do that. Ooh, hello, Ricaro. All right. Owner's manual, the contents of. This is a fun moment. I hope I don't damage any part of it. Feels so good. All right, what do we have here? VIN placard, quick reference guide for all Mustangs in general. 
the GT500 supplement. This is what we'll come back to. Sirius XM, tire warranty guide, Mustang owner's manual. This is the Mustang in general. The Ford Performance owner's manual sleeve. Ooh. <laughs> nice. All right, let's assemble this. But we'll get back to the handling package later. There's so much to look at. I'm like a kid on Christmas. We'll start with the hood. The how to pop the hood seems fairly obvious. Yeah, I know, right? But it's a little trickier than you may think, unless you're already familiar with this design. This has hood pins, and they are the traditional kind where like the, there's a rod sticking up here and a pin that goes through it. These are actually push hood pins. But you can't just walk up and push them because if you could, any old Yahoo could come to the parking lot and pop the hood on your car and do all kinds of nefarious stuff. What you have to do is release the hood latch like any old 700 horsepower Ford Mustang, then push each pin so you get that nice positive click and then pull up on the hood, make sure this fully releases, pull up on the hood and then hit the latch. It's nice that it's held up by a strut. Now you get to reveal the majesty of your 760 horsepower, 5.2 liter supercharged to V8 to all your friends at the show and shine. And you can bet we'll be doing just that. Now it's cool obviously to have a supercharged V8, but it's even cooler when you can see that on the plaque here, it says hand built with pride and the name of the person who had built this engine, Adam Stein. Adam, hope you did a great job. I feel like you already did. Now. It's cool that you get the name embossed on there or engraved on there and we get to start our snake counter at one because it's on the supercharger and I think there's another one right there. So we'll go ahead and call it two. Above here, what's going on here? I thought there was a vent. Yes, there is. And it's blocked off with these six screws. Now the GT500 owner's manual supplement says you pull that off, you unscrew those and remove them when you go to a racetrack so you can help extract all the heat this engine makes when you're going fast and then you put it back on when you go on the road so when it rains, you don't get a bunch of water through the engine. Now, when it comes to power and other details in the owner's manual supplement, fuel quality, choosing the right fuel. Ford recommends 91 octane minimum, but says for optimal performance, use premium unleaded gasoline with an octane rating of 93 or higher. We're in California, we only get 91 octane, it sucks for us. Our car requires a break-in. Drive your vehicle at least 100 miles before performing extended wide open throttle maneuvers and at least 1,000 miles before operating your vehicle at high speeds or track conditions. I wonder what they mean by extended wide open throttle maneuvers. How many seconds is extended? Because I feel like if you're on the go pedal wide open throttle for four seconds, you're gonna be doing uh, high speeds very easily. We'll, we'll find that out. Now, how do you shut the hood? Again, should seem simple, but we are working with hood pins. Owner's manual says lower the hood and allow it to drop under its own weight for the last eight to 12 inches. Let's do that. Oh, I see. We got to actually peel these guys off first though. Oh yeah. I love finding these little things. Very nice. So now we're going to talk about wheels and tires. So take a seat and uh, we can add two snakes to our snake counter because there's one here and one on the other side that brings us to four now. But wheels and tires, this is what you get when you don't get the carbon fiber track pack and you don't get those really cool carbon fiber wheels. You get forged aluminum wheels that look like this. Still neat, not as cool as carbon fiber, but hey, we'll save the $18,500. They're wrapped with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S up front, they're 305. 30, 20, and the rear, they're 315s. The carbon fiber track pack gets half an inch wider rear wheels than this one, but again, not this car. But can we just, again, take awe at the size of the front rotor here? 16 and a half inches, that's ridiculous. That's bigger than most wheels uh, 10 years ago, if not 15, just insane. Now, and if you're gonna use this for track use, which you should, because it's set up for that, you should, again, read the the handy uh, owner's manual supplement. Because not only does Ford provide the cold tire pressure and hot tire pressure settings for track use, they also supply uh, alignment settings for this car and the carbon fiber track pack for street and track. So with this car, you're gonna add about a degree of negative camber up front and about uh, half a degree of negative camber <laughs> in the rear for track use. And if you're gonna go to the track, you need 
to burnish your brake pads. If you already know what brake burnishing is, you can skip ahead, that's not really relevant to you. But if you don't know what brake burnishing is, it's a way to basically season your brake pads, I guess, uh, to make sure that they work to the demands of racetrack use, especially when you have a car as heavy as this one, you're gonna be working those pads really hard. In the case of this vehicle, I'm just gonna read verbatim what the owner's manual says about the brake burnishing procedure. The step one, perform at least 30 stops from approximately 50 miles an hour at one third of a G deceleration with 0.75 miles spacing between stops. Now once you've done that 30 times, you move on to the high temperature brake bedding cycle, which is begin with cool brakes, perform 15 consecutive stops back to back, accelerating at three quarter throttle to 80 miles an hour and then braking to 20 miles an hour at one G deceleration. The brakes may omit an odor or smoke during this part of the procedures. So you have to do 15 consecutive stops from 80 miles an hour at a G. That's basically a panic stop, basically at the limit of the brakes. That's intense and something you can really only do if you have a uh, empty back road or a test track like this one by us. So we'll do that eventually, uh, but right now let's hop inside and take a look at the interior. At the back, well, not the back, in the middle, front, whatever you want to call it, the Recaro bucket seats, which bring our snake count up by two. So two, four, six, and then this guy right here, number seven, and on the back, number eight, eight snakes, because we won't count, we don't count digital snakes. Eight snakes is actually pretty um, respectable in the world of modern sports cars that typically put their performance badges everywhere and in high numbers. I'm, I'm pretty content with eight. It's also cool to see the chassis number right there on the dash. The big news inside of the GT500, aside from the power, is the fact that it has a dual clutch automatic transmission. Yeah, we'll call dual clutches an automatic because there's no clutch pedal, but you know, <coughs> semantics. That's why you have this rotary shift dial instead of a traditional shifter, let's call it that. It's weird to not have a manual gearbox in a Mustang, let alone a GT500, but this is the world we live in now. And actually from the previous GT500s that I've driven of this generation, the ones that we tested way back when, this is actually really, really nice. It's got some neat features too that are, you know, you'd expect from a dual clutch transmission, but not necessarily a Mustang. So it's neat to see them in practice. Uh, you've got the shift paddles on the steering wheel themselves. They're not on the column, they're on the wheel. Upshift on the right, downshift on the left. But there's a couple neat features baked into it. For example, if you pull the downshift lever and hold it while you're cruising at any speed, the transmission will shift as quickly as possible to the lowest possible gear. That's great for, let's just say, quick passing maneuvers, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. But my favorite part about the transmission is number one, two, three, four down the bullet list here in the owner's manual. Pull and hold both the right paddle and left paddle for a temporary neutral position. Neutral remains until you release both paddles. Why would you want to do that, for example? Well, let's just say you're cruising along and you see some you know, kids on a school bus and you want to show them what 760 horsepower sounds like. You can, just grab both pedals, start revving the hell out of it, and everybody's happy, everybody's having a good time. It's a real neat thing they've built into this car. On the opposite column though, is a peculiar box because the box says, upshifts when accelerating recommended for best fuel economy. That's right. In a Mustang GT500 with 760 horsepower and a combined fuel economy rating of 14, the owner's manual explains when to shift at what speed for the best fuel economy. If you're interested, you shift to second at 15 miles an hour, third at 20 miles an hour, fourth at 25 miles an hour, fifth at 30 miles an hour, sixth at 40 miles an hour, and seventh at 50 miles an hour. Congratulations, no one's happy because you're driving this thing for fuel economy. That's not how you do it. I need to apologize because I have made a grievous error. There are actually nine snakes. I missed the one on the steering wheel. Now we get back to installing the parts that we started with. I wanted to do this the whole time, but I got distracted, sorry. But we're gonna install the gurney flap extension, I think is the technical name first. And you get to watch me struggle through this. Whoever's editing this, please don't put generic rock music over this. That's, if I hear a guitar during this, during the edit, I'm, I'm yeah, serious. <laughs> Is 
It's getting chilly. You know, there's nothing cooler than unboxing a new toy and then making it cooler yourself. And that's exactly what we've done with the GT500. We've unboxed it, we showed all the neat stuff and some fun stuff in the owner's manual. And then I think we've actually made it look cooler by installing the uh, track accessory pack that came in the trunk. And the rear splitter was really easy to put on. The front splitter wickers extensions were a little bit more complicated, a little more time consuming, but not something you couldn't do in your driveway with a jack or some ramps. And I think it looks much better for it. Now, keep watching this channel and visit Edmunds.com to find out what it's like as we continue our ownership experience with this car. You can bet we're gonna do all kinds of stuff with it. Drag racing, road racing, yes, even fuel economy, measurement, and all that other kinds of stuff. Thank you guys for watching, and please hit subscribe because it allows us to keep doing stuff like this.